What is the GPWS and what is the eGPWS? Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, it's Gabriele here from pilotclimb.com and in today's video we're gonna talk about the GPWS and the eGPWS. By the end of this video you will know what the GPWS is, why we have got the GPWS and the eGPWS and then at the end of this video we're gonna jump into the simulator and we're gonna analyze each warnings and call outs that the GPWS of a Boeing 737 provides us. Before starting, if you have any questions during the video, just leave a comment below with a question and then I will answer you out. Also, if you have any video request, any topic that you would like me to do a video, just drop me a comment below and then I will consider your request. So, let's jump into the GPWS. First of all, the GPWS, the, the term means Ground Proximity Warning System. Why do we have the GPWS? The GPWS was made because the pilots were actually flying a fully serviceable uh, aircraft into the terrain. So fully trained pilots with fully serviceable aircraft were actually flying into the terrain. This is also called CFIT or control flight into terrain. So what happened, what, what was happening is that basically the pilots were flying the plane and they were unable to orientate themselves with the terrain around so they were flying to terrain. What happened is that then uh, the, the GPWS was invented and this system was actually able to provide the pilots with warnings and cautions when they were getting too close to the terrain. But the problem with the GPWS is that uh, the GPWS is only based on radio altitudes indications. Since the radio altitude indications normally works within the last 2500 feet, in some cases there were no enough time for the pilot to react after a GPWS warning because they were already too close when the warning actually occurred. So a few years later, even though with the, uh, with the GPWS the CFI, the control flying into terrain accident, really decreases a lot because with this feature on board you can imagine all the um, potential uh, CFIT uh, events were actually solved. The percentage of CFIT was actually reduced a lot with GPWS but anyway there was a problem because the radio altimeter was way was starting to work when the aircraft was cl close to the terrain and sometimes the pilots were, didn't have enough time to react. So in order to solve this second problem the eGPWS was actually invented. The difference between the GPWS and the eGPWS is the following. As as we said the GPWS uses only the radio altimeter information and the eGPWS uses the GPS positions with an, an in, internal uh, database in the aircraft about the terrain. So the aircraft has got an internal database where all the terrain obstacles around are in, uh, in the system. We have got the GPS that actually tells, knows where the aircraft is and the eGPWS also uses the uh, barometric information of the aircraft. So these three source of information combined works together and give us the eGPWS cautions and warnings. So as you can imagine the eGPWS was actually able to provide cautions way before the GPWS. So in order to give more time for to the pilot to react of um, when they were getting too close to the terrain. Okay but what the eGPWS and GPWS give us actually. What the GPWS provides us are warning call outs and visual uh, signs of the terrain closure of all, any other potential hazard of the flight. For example when the GPWS talk with the wind with, with the predictive uh, wind shear system we have information about the wind shear as well. So the aircraft actually screams to the pilot wind shear, wind shear when they are inside the wind shear or if you are getting too close to the terrain it's gonna tell us terrain, terrain, pull up. So this is all, all the aural warnings that the eGPWS, GPWS and the predictive wind shear system provides the pilots. Or another example is for example if the aircraft is starting uh, is having a, a bank angle that is a little bit too much in the Boeing 737 for example 
is 35 degrees of bank then the gpws will actually warn us that we are banking too much and it's gonna tell us bank angle bank angle these are all our alerts that make the pilot to wake up okay so now that the gpws and egpws is clear what it is and why we have and what problem they solved let's jump right into the simulator i'm gonna show you where to find the egpws on the boeing 737 how to do a test and then we're gonna analyze each and single warning oral warning and then i'm gonna talk to you through the warning what does it mean and what you should do so let's jump into the simulator welcome on board this boeing 737 simulator as you can see from the, uh, the simulator i'm gonna show you where the gpws is so the gpws system is actually in here okay so the gpws switches are in here as you can see on the on the left side the captain side there is no gpws switches so if you want to do any change it's only in here okay I'm gonna go closer to the GPWS position here. Here we go. So, first of all, I want you to stay focused in here. This is the navigation display, and as you can see, the eGPWS, this is the in internal database of the terrain. So, as you can see, we've got this yellow here, this red in here, and this means that this is the actual visual indication of the terrain this is the aircraft okay so it has got the information about the position of the aircraft relative to the terrain this was not possible with G with the gpws in fact if i do this and we look outside this is actually the terrain that is represented in here okay so the terrain that you see here is the terrain that is outside as you can see in the picture here we've got the red terrain the red terrain and the yellow terrain the red terrain in this case means that we have terrain that is at 2000 feet above our altitude okay whenever you've got terrain that is above 2000 feet of your altitude this is the red is depicted in red when you've got yellow the yellow means that the terrain is between 2000 feet above your altitude and 500 feet below your altitude and then you've got the green terrain which is more than, than 500 all the way down to 2000 feet below you then when we've got blank there is a black information about terrain means that terrain is not a factor okay so as you can see here this is all dashed these are points so it's not a full uh, a full ride okay what happens is whenever you get close to the terrain if you don't do uh, the corrective action in order to warn you that you're getting too close to the terrain this red actually became solid red and this yellow as well okay so this is an information because we are still far away but if you get close the gpws will make this uh, sorry the gpws will make actually this uh, dust red to, into solid red in order to be to give us a visual warning as well all right so again this is the panel okay of the gpws and you can do that the system test here and then you've got these three switches these three switches means that depending on the situation that you are in you might be required not to land with your landing flaps or with the gear up or if you have any other issue with the terrain okay so if you know what you're doing and you're following the correct procedure there might be some situations in which you have to uh, inhibit the terrain warning or the gear warning because the gpws also gives you information about your landing gear about your flap let's say you're flying too close to the terrain it will take with a gear up for example it will tell you that you are getting too close to the terrain with a gear up okay so these are all the information so sometimes you don't uh, you have to land with the flaps that are not in landing position so what will happen is that in order not to add the warning of the gpws you want to actually inhibit the warning okay but as long as you know what you're doing it's fine okay never do that if you're not following the procedures or you don't have is something that you have to do because of the situation all right so now i'm gonna press the system test okay i'll give you a small trick here if you press this uh, system test for a long period of time you're gonna have a full system test okay when it does the full system test is actually provides us with the aural warnings and the as well the the the, the visual warning on the pfd which is the scream on the right and the and in there okay so what we're gonna do now i'm gonna press this the, the the button in here and then we're gonna analyze each and single call out so let's do that the first one is the glide stop this this warning actually tells you if you are having a big deviation on the glide stop if you are flying below the glide stop the egpws will actually warn you okay let's let's see, let's listen to the next one oh, ah. so pull up 
as you can see here we've got as well the pull up is in red uh, below the pfd and the pull up what is actually telling you that you have a um a, a rate of descent that is way too much for your altitude okay so let's say you're getting close to the terrain for example in the last 1000 feet and you suddenly increase your rate of descent uh, increase your rate of descent too much it will tell you first sink rate because your rate is way too much and then if you don't change your attitude it will actually tell you pull up is actually warning you that you have to pull up the nose of the aircraft in order to separate yourself from the terrain let's jump into the right next one this other one the tone it has got a tone and then it has wind shear wind shear wind shear three times actually is it is telling us that we are inside a wind shear so you need to do something about it there is a specific maneuver which is called wind shear scale maneuver and i made actually a separate video about the wind shear just go and check that out because it was quite uh, i explained exactly what wind shear is and how it works i will make sure that uh, you're gonna find a link in the comment below all right Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate is a, is a caution that's basically telling us that our rate of descent is too much for that altitude, okay? If we are getting close to the terrain, we have a, 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 a way too much the rate of descent, okay? Our vertical speed is very high. What happens is that it's gonna first tell us sink rate, sink rate, sink rate. If we, we don't do anything, or if we increase the rate of descent, it will actually tell us pull up, okay? Terrain. As you can see, we've got terrain and pull up here on the PFD. What happened is that we are getting too close to the terrain is warning us, okay? So we need to do something. In this case, whenever you hear terrain pull up, you need to do the uh, terrain escape maneuver, okay? If you're getting value from this video, please consider subscribe to the channel and give it a like to the video. Let's continue. Here we go, don't sink, don't sink. This is a warning that the GPWS give us if after takeoff you actually lose altitude, okay? If you take off and then you start losing altitude, you start to sink, then the GPWS will actually tell you don't sink. Don't sink, too low terrain. Too low terrain is a warning that the GPWS tells you, give, gives you if you're flying too close to the terrain at high speed with the gear up or the flaps not in landing position. Too low gear. Too low gear is another warning that GPWS tells you if you fly too close to the terrain at low speed with the gear up. That's why, for example, imagine if you have to land with the gear up because you have some problem with the landing gear and the procedure tells you that you have to land with the gear up, you don't want to have this warning all the way down during the approach. So if you look at the panel here, we've actually got the gear inhibit switch. So that's why if you know what you're doing, it's a procedure that requires you to land with the gear up, you have to do that. Otherwise, during the approach, you're gonna have this warning all the way down and I tell you, it's not a nice thing to have. Too low flaps is a warning that GPWS tells you if gives you if you are flying too close to the terrain at low speed with a flap non in landing configuration. Again, there might be some situation where you have to land not with landing flaps, and that's why we've got the flap in a bit switch here. If you look next to the system test, okay. Here we go, bank angle is another warning that's a caution that the GPWS tells you if you, your bank angle is too much. On the Boeing 737, whenever you pass 35 degrees of bank, it will actually tell you bank angle, bank angle. And then it will give you another warning at 40 degrees and another warning at 45 degrees, okay? It's actually telling you, listen man, you're banking too much. Bank angle, approaching metabolism. Approaching minima is a call that the system gives you when you are getting close 100 feet above your minima, your decision altitude. All right, now there will be a series of numbers. These numbers are, are actually the radio altimeters number. The system is actually reading you the radio altimeters number. We have 2,500 means that you have 2,500 feet separation from the terrain below you. This system just went through from 2500 all the way down to 10 feet radio altitude 
separation from the ground below you okay especially during landing the 50 40 30 20 10 helps you out for the landing uh, maneuver okay the terrain ahead caution is basically telling you that you have between 40 and 60 seconds from the impact with the terrain okay as you can see you have more time to react you have to do a quick action for sure and that's well, that's why this system are constantly improving because are giving you the possibility are giving you more time to react obstacle obstacle ahead means that you've got an obstacle okay it could be a man-made obstacle so when it says obstacle obstacle ahead again you are between 40 to 60 seconds from the impact with that obstacle okay i hope the video was clear for you i hope you take something out of it and you understood the difference between the gpws the egpws and which problem they solve if you still have any questions just leave me a comment below and then i will answer you out if you want to support the channel please consider subscribe give a like to the to the video and then you go you can go to piloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content and i'll see you in the next one